good to be with you. Welcome to Class Outside. Today, we're going to learn how to set up a TrueNAS backup server. For this, we'll need a computer to use as our server. The computer will need at least two drives. One will be dedicated for only the operating system. This process will require all data on the computer to be deleted. So make sure anything important is backed up or copied somewhere else first. The computer will need to be connected to the router by an ethernet cable. Wi-Fi is currently not supported. We will also need an empty USB drive in the program called Rufus, which will be used to install software to the drive and the TrueNAS software, TrueNAS Core, which we will be installing. Once all important data is copied from the soon to be server, we can start by downloading the software. Go to the link for TrueNAS in the video description. You may need to sign in with either a Google or GitHub account. Afterwards, choose the version of TrueNAS you would like to use. I will be using the stable version of TrueNAS Core. TrueNAS offers a different paid solution called TrueNAS Scale. For this demonstration, we'll be using the free version of TrueNAS Core. Once downloaded, visit the GitHub link in the description to find the Rufus tool and click the Releases section. I will download the .exe release because I am using a Windows computer to set this up. This tool lets us take the image we downloaded from TrueNAS and set it up on a USB so that the computer can boot to the USB similar to how it boots to its operating system. Let's plug in the USB and open Rufus. Select the USB from the list. Make sure you selected the correct one because this will erase all data on the USB. Then let's use the select button to choose the .iso file we got from TrueNAS a few minutes ago. and click start. Now, eject the USB and plug it into the computer we want to use as a server. Turn that computer on and immediately start pressing the boot options or BIOS key on your keyboard. This key can be different depending on the brand and model of your computer. Often, it is either the delete key or one of the function keys like F2 or F8. It also often flashes for a brief moment when booting. When you have the correct key, it should bring you to a menu with boot options. This menu will also be different depending on your brand and model of computer. Look for an option or section similar to boot order or boot priority and select that. From that section, try and set the USB as the first option. Then save the setting and continue. The computer should now load into the software we installed on the USB. Press 1 to boot the TrueNAS installer. Select the OK option to install. Then choose the drive you want the TrueNAS operating system to be on. The drive chosen can only be used for the operating system and will not be able to contribute to the total storage available on the server. I would recommend choosing the smallest drive available. Remember, continuing will erase the data on your drive, so you should copy everything important off first. I have already backed up the data from these drives, so I can continue. Then, provide a password for this new server. Remember this password. You will need it any time you desire to make changes. Then it will ask you to, prefer, to choose whether to boot using UEFI or BIOS. Many computers that come out with Windows 8 or newer tend to support UEFI. If you are uncertain about what your computer supports, you can try UEFI, and if it doesn't work, you can restart the process of installing TrueNAS and try again with the BIOS option selected. Next, it will ask if you'd like to use a swap partition. Swap partitions are there if your system's trying to do too much all at once, and its RAM or memory gets full. If that does happen, it can offload some of the information directly to the storage drive. Since the drive can only be used for the operating system, and I have more than 16 gigabytes left over, I will say yes. Then, TrueNAS will start installing. It will inform you once it's complete, and afterwards, you can choose to reboot your system. Upon rebooting, unplug the USB, or it may reload into the same software. 
the first boot will often take some time for TrueNAS to set up. You will know it's complete and ready for operation when you see the console setup dialog. Let's begin configuring our network so that it can connect to our other devices. Press the one key, then enter to start network configuration. Only one interface is available, so we will select that to quit. No on configuring DHCP, dynamic host configuration protocol, could lead to our address changing over time. For this server, we want a static address, which is unchanging, so that we can access it from our devices on the same network consistently. We will press Y for IPv4 configuration. For an interface name, we can choose the same as before. Then choose an IP address. This IP address must be compatible with your network setup and not already in use. You can learn more about your network settings from another device connected to the same network. On Windows, you may use ipconfig in a command prompt to learn the default gateway and subnet mask. This is the router's IP address, and the subnet mask tells us what addresses are available on the subnet or subnetwork. Since the last value is a zero, we know that we can use addresses that match the default gateway and have a different value in the final position. Next, we can use the command ARP a to see what IP addresses are already in use, which appear similar to the default gateway's IP. The value must be between 1 and 254 and not already taken. For this example, I will choose 12. And the net mask is the subnet mask. Here, we should put the same value we saw in our IP config results. And we can ignore IPv6 for now and press N. We should see the IP addresses afterwards. Now, open a browser with another device on your network. And in the address bar, type the IP address we set up on the server. Once loaded, you should see a login for your server. For the username, put root and then use the password you set up. Now, we can configure our drives so that we can use them. We'll start by creating a pool, which is basically a group of drives whose storage can be accessed for some purpose. Go to the storage section and select pools, then add and create a new pool. Let's name our pool. And in the tables below, select our disks from the left and click the arrow to move them to the right. You may see some red text. This informs us of an incompatibility with our RAID option. RAID describes how data is stored across multiple drives. I will change the setting to Stripe. Stripe copies information to all drives in the pool. This makes recovery much harder because if one drive fails, all of the data may be lost. So if you are choosing Stripe, please be aware that it will put any files on the server at risk. Because of this risk, it informs us of the potential challenge that we may face down in the red text. To continue, we must choose to force our continuation. Once satisfied with the setup, click Create. Again, a warning appears, and we must click Confirm and then Continue to proceed. You can later add more disks to the pool if you'd like to upgrade your storage. For this, we can find the pool and click the Settings icon and choose to Add VDEVs, which brings us to a familiar screen where we can add our disks. Next, we'll add a user account which can access the pool. Go to Accounts, Users, and click Add. Provide a username and a password. These are credentials that someone interested in accessing the pool can use. Also, select the Microsoft account checkbox. This helps when some Windows machines attempt to access the pool. Next, we will set up the pool to be viewed over a network. First, go back to the Pools tab and select the vertical three-dot menu for the pool and click Add Data Set. Provide a name for the set and click Submit. Then add another data set within that. This nesting of data sets can be done so that we can tailor permissions for certain users. Let's click the three-dot menu for that data set and select Edit Permissions. Here we can search for the user we recently set up. And click Apply User. Then select the group and change any other permissions you may desire. Next, 
Now, we can set up the pool for Windows sharing. Under sharing, select Windows Shares SMB and click Add and navigate to the data set we have configured. Select and submit. We will want to click Enable Service and we may be asked to configure permissions again through an access control list. I'll select Restricted as the default and click Save. Now, we can connect our Windows computer to the backup drive. Open a file explorer on your Windows machine and go to the This PC tab. Right click and select Add a Network Connection. We want to choose a device on the network and in the field put two backslashes, then the IP of the TrueNAS server, another backslash, and then the data set we want to access. Next, we will sign in with our user we just set up. and finish. Now we can access the drive from our PC and we can add and read from it just like an external drive. Look at that. Together we have set up and connected a TrueNAS server. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Have a great day and thank you for attending class outside.